Hi guys, it's Blakey for Shaman's Forge Bushcraft. Okay, in this final installment on the percussion revolver, we're going to talk about tips and tricks and ways to accurize it. Now, again, we're going to be talking about the Remington. Many of these things will apply to Colt, but I will also give you ideas of things that are specifically for Colt. So, accuracy. What makes an accurate revolver is consistency, shot to shot. So loading it creates consistency, and here's how we need to do this. The distance between the end of the chamber and the beginning of the forcing cone needs to be consistent. The pressure applied to the powder charge needs to be consistent. Because if you compress it a little bit more, you get a little more pressure your spike goes up a little bit. If you don't compress it quite as tight, then it doesn't. If the bullet is a little looser, then it pops free, the cork pops, before the proper pressure. Little things like that. So, what we're looking for here is, this is a critical measurement. Now, you put the measured powder in. How much powder? The amount of powder, it should be enough that when I fill it up and I put my wad or my conical bullet on and I ram it down it should just get down to where and of course this gun is totally unloaded guys the cylinder will freely turn but the bullet should be at a minimum length to come back into the forcing cone here's a way to kind of regulate that once you've got the charge in and that is with your rammer now as you see the rammer goes down and in when it enters into the chamber itself, right, excuse me, mosquito, there, see? All right, I have two dots on my rammer face. I know you can't see them, I've already checked. It can't be seen in the camera. But what it is, is I have like this. I have a, the rammer, let's use this for it. And there's a dot, a line, and a dot. As I slide it down, when the first dot disappears, but my second dot is still visible, I am at a consistent depth, even with that line. And instead of just putting a line across there that may be too deep, where did it go, etc., that's the reason I put the dot, a line, and a dot, so that when the first dot disappears, the second dot is still visible. I am at a consistent depth, consistent press, okay? Next little step that improves accuracy a great deal. Notice on that front sight, as it came from the factory, it's kind of rounded a little bit. You see this a lot on the Colts, on the cone front post of the 51, or that rounded kind of front sight on the 1860. A rounded sight is lousy for accuracy because as light, hits it at different angles, it seems to change. I know that doesn't make sense, but in reality, that's the way it is. A sharp angle, what we call a partridge sight, is superior for consistent shot to shot. So what I've done is, I think you can tell it, I have squared this off sharply with a file, not removing much metal, but just making it a 90 degree edge. And then on the rear sight back facing me, I have done this. I've undercut it just so slightly. This puts my front sight a little in shadow for most shooting. Otherwise, I would come up to shoot and I may have a glare off of it or the sunlight's hitting and it's bright. By undercutting it ever so slightly, I directed that downward and I don't get that glare back at me. So when I line up and look at my sight, I get a clearer sight picture, okay? The rear sight. Take a needle file. You can get these in uh, hardware and craft stores. Something that will just fit into that notch and make sure that that notch is nice and square. Oftentimes when they come from the factory, they're a little flared or the one size a little more than the other because it's polished at kind of high speed. You want to make sure that that sight is square. Okay? So that now your sight picture is very square like a modern partridge sight. Greatly improves accuracy. Another thing that improves accuracy a lot is the muzzle. Now, 
to not get into a lot of complicated things. The muzzle of the gun needs to be square and 90 degrees to the side. However, quite often they're not, they're not especially in a lot of the earlier ones, because when he, they're polishing it at the factory, they may get a little overzealous on one side. And so instead of the sight being truly square, one side's a little higher, or this side's a little higher, or the back. And that will tend to throw the shot. Okay, so I get up here and I'm doing my sight in. I've done everything we've talked up to this point to increase accuracy. I've got the gun bedded on a good wrist and I squeeze off the shot at the same spot again and again and it's consistently going left. High is a matter of sight and we can adjust that. Left or right indicates that something is steering it. So, I will take a T-square, one of the small T-squares like you use in construction, and put up there and make sure that my muzzle, as I turn it, is 90 degrees square. If it's not, I will draw a file on the high side. Draw a file means just file straight across it on the high side to make it come down and be level. I have had guns that shot, I, well, let me tell you a story. I had an 1860 Army original that at some point in its long lifespan, someone had refinished it and re-charcoal blued it so it was very bright and it had actual ivory grips on it. It also, at 25 yards, hit three feet left. The muzzle was not flat. By draw filing it and getting the muzzle nice and 90 degree, that corrected that problem and it brought my point of impact back. Elevation is going to be because the sight systems of these guns were designed for about 75 yards as a combat gun. So you want to take it and you will deepen the rear notch on a Colt and you will square off the top and deepen the Ruger just a little. Boy, these skeeters look bad out here today. So, another thing is your triggers, doing a trigger job. Mike Bellevue on... Uh, I think it's Duelist 1954 or something like that. I'm sorry if I messed that up, but I will put a link at the end of this video. Has done an outstanding job of showing how to gunsmith and how to improve the accuracy and reliability of a cap and ball revolver. Changing out the nipples to stainless steel and improving the action and polishing. So I'm gonna leave a link to his rather than just rehashing that to you. But needless to say that most of the guns today as they come from the factory are light years better than what I started out with. Years ago, they were so crude noisemakers that you had to put a lot of work in them to get them to be any kind of reliable or accurate. Today, they come out of the box able to handle basically modern ammunition and shoot as well as any service gun. But little tricks will make your life a lot better. Another little thing that adds help here is this. The Remington The base pin on the Remington does not have any um, grease screws. As you can see, it's a smooth pin. But if you look underneath, you'll notice on mine notches and those grooves I've cut into it. Okay, I simply took a needle file and cut grooves going across it. This holds grease because the base pin, as you can see in the Remington, is rather small and it wants to bind on it once you've been doing extensive shooting. By making those, it holds a little bit more lubricant in there, and so the cylinder remains more fluid longer. On a Colt, you can do the same thing if it's needed. Colts come with a ribbed uh, base pin and therefore don't need a lot of this, okay? Now, on the Colt, different from the Remington, when you take the barrel off and you look at the back end where the bullet goes, that is the forcing cone. The same on the Remington right here. It needs to be smooth. If it's rough or you're seeing a lot of leading there, it needs to be polished. Now with a Colt, it's fairly easy to take one of the Dremel tool grinder heads and simply by hand stick it in there and turn it. And you'll polish that up and take care of any burrs or imperfections there. That will greatly improve accuracy because as the bullet exits the chamber, that is the transition. That is the catcher's mitt of the ball coming out of the cylinder and now entering the barrel. 
if it's rough and the ball hits and becomes deformed, because there's a lot of pressure pushing it, it's, it's going to come out. And lead balls are easily deformed. That's an advantage we want for the gun. But if it hits it and it's kind of eh, then actually when it comes out in the barrel, it's not truly round anymore. So we want this forcing cone on the Colt and on the Remington to be a nice smooth landing zone so that the ball hits and then begins engaging the rifling and twisting. The muzzle should also be not sharp on the rifling side. If it's sharp where you can take your finger like this and put it in the rifling and turn it and it wants to cut you, it's too sharp. Take that Dremel tool and sit there. Don't put it in the machine, just sit there and turn it. One of those cone-shaped grinding devices, ask for one that's very fine, for fine polishing, and they'll, they'll set you up at the hardware store or the craft store. Something big enough to fill that hole and stand up, you know. The one I'm talking about is about as big as a nickel at the base, and you just sit in there by hand and turn it. Also, your chamber mouse, right here, take them and do that as well. Break that. Now, the two schools of thought are, when I ram the bullet in there, it should shave off and leave a little ring of lead. That is creating a driving band on the side of the round ball. Yes, that's a good thing. But many of the original Colts I've seen, this is actually kind of beveled, not from age, because it swedges and squeezes the lid in there for a better seal rather than cutting it. And the problem with the cutting it is if it's cut and it comes out and it hits a good forcing cone, that shaved band on the side now will lock up into the riflings and act like a driving band on a modern gun a modern ammunition bullet but by taking that wire edge off of these making them more of a swedge it seems to less deform the bullet less damaging the bullet and they seem to shoot more accurately in my experience of course trigger jobs sights all that above will improve accuracy and there are other video there are tons of videos out there that will show you exactly how to do that. And I'm not going to bore you with that. But, on the Colt, it has been my experience that they shoot round balls best. Uh, occasionally you'll find one that will shoot the conical really, really well. I don't mean to say don't waste your time with it. They can be very good. But, for the most part of the ones that I've had, the 30, 40, 50 I've had over my life, stick with a round ball. The Remington shoots the round ball very well, but it does seem to like the uh, Lee Conical pretty well as well. And you can also buy Lee Buffalo bullets and a few other actual bullets that are designed for loading in these guns if you want a little more hit and a little more stopping power. Performance in the field. Always go with the lead, pure lead, because it orbitrates better on firing, so it grabs the rifling better. And upon impact, it orbitrates again, acting like we think of a hollow point. No, it doesn't open up, but it kind of flattens out and therefore drags and makes a bigger wound and dumps more energy here rather than over penetrating. Little things like that. Hope this gives you some ideas, guys. Please be safe. As always, do not shoot smokeless powder in a black powder firearm and educate yourself. Take the time to do some research and find out what gun you want what kind of bullet you want, and what kind of powder dispensing, how to carry cartridges, work all these details out. Because the more information that you learn, the more education, the more enjoyable it will come when you get to range time, or when you get to carrying these in the field. If it's always a hassle, you're never going to want to do it. Oh, um, and the final, final, cleaning. We'll deal with that in just a second. Stay with me.